Now get this right, Viltrox actually messaged me about this lens and I was a little bit hesitant, but then this screen right here, this is just regular screen, like obviously the Sony Zeiss lenses had this, but this is amazing. It doesn't just have your focal point, it doesn't have your aperture, you can actually set A and B points. Literally, you can focus on one part, tap a button, and it will automatically pull to the next part. That is massive when it comes to manual focus. And I know you can do the same on the Sony Alpha screens and stuff, tap to focus, but this is in manual mode. This is massive because you can obviously do micro adjustments as well. It's great for cinematographers and I cannot wait for them to bring this to all the other lenders. Let's get into this video. So the Viltrox 16mm is an f1.8 for Sony full frame cameras. It has a maximum aperture of that f1.8 to a minimum of f22. It is a 9 blade diaphragm which gives you nice smooth bokeh which we will test soon, a bright LCD display on the top, a large smooth focus ring, an aperture ring that can also be clicked or de-clicked, it has a manual to autofocus switch on the side and two function buttons. It has a front filter thread of 77 millimeters. It has a USB-C connection at the lens mount for future firmware updates. It has a weather sealing gasket on the lens mount. And the total weight is 557 grams without the lens cap and the lens hood. Now, obviously when it comes to this wide angle lens, architecture, landscape, real estate, vlogging, those kind of things will benefit largely from a 16 millimeter lens. And you can see the image quality on this thing is phenomenal. So let's get into the lens chart and see how sharp this lens actually is. So when it comes to the image quality of this 16 millimeters at f1.8 in the center, it is tack sharp. And when we go out to the corners, well, you can't really see the corners because it was a little bit too wide for my chart, but it was nice and sharp regardless. This is the same all the way up until maybe about f16 slash f22. That's where pretty much diffraction starts to kick in. And at f22, it's a little bit soft and there's not as much contrast in the image. But overall, the image quality on this thing is absolutely phenomenal if you want a tack sharp lens. Now, when it comes to longitudinal chromatic aberration, it's probably one of the best performing lenses I've ever seen. This is wide open at f1.8 and there's almost none, it's astonishing. Obviously, if you stop down to F2, it's 100% clean, crisp, and clear. Now, when it comes to the flaring, you can see here that the image actually does wash out just a little bit. There is a little bit of rainbow rings going around there and a little bit of colored flaring. It's not super clean, but it's not too bad, but some people may actually think that this will be a small con. So the build quality on this thing is absolutely incredible. It's a metal design, and I just feel like everything on here feels absolutely premium. It's almost like a G Master lens, but for Viltrox. This thing is hands down, I'm not gonna say this lightly, but this is the best 16 millimeter lens you can get out for full frame Sony E-mount right now. It is $549 for an F1.8, 16 millimeter lens, let that sink in. The competition out there cannot even touch what this thing can do for the price. I don't understand how Viltrox are actually gonna be making money on this. Pretty much at this time, Sony have the 14 millimeter F1.8 G Master lens, and that is 1,598 US, 1,598 US. Literally like three times the price of this lens. And uh, Sigma also have their 14 millimeter lens, I think is also an F1.8, and that is 1,599 US. It's literally the exact same price as the G Master. So that is pretty much three times the price of this lens. Then you've also got the Samyang 14 F2.8, you've got the Rokinon 14 F2.8, the Sigma 17 F4, the Samyang 18 F2.8, and the Zeiss 18 F2.8. Now you do have to take it into consideration that the Sony 14 and the Sigma 14 is a 14, and this is a 16 millimeter lens. So they're kind of on their own right there. Whereas this 16 mm lens, you're competing with all these other lenses that are generally an f2.8 or if it is a faster lens it's generally manual lenses this is autofocus and it's kind of on its own when it comes to the features 
and it's just what it's worth. It's just crazy. So now when a lot of people think wide angle lenses, they think distortion. And <laughs> the Sony 16 to 35 PZ lens, this new one has extreme barrel distortion when it comes to that 16 mils. Whereas this one here, the Viltrox, it doesn't really have any distortion whatsoever. It's like a very small amount of barrel distortion. And I mean very small amount. If you have a look at the photo, you can see it a little bit. It's, it's there. But when it comes to videos, you probably won't notice it at all. And even with photo and video, you still can correct that distortion as well. Especially when it comes to photos, it's really easy to correct distortion. But I don't think you're going to have any issues using this for architecture or real estate. Okay, so now we got to talk about the main thing that makes this thing shine over everything else. And that is this little LCD screen and how it works. And obviously that's paired with how it focuses as well. But First thing, let's tick it off. It's not complete linear when it comes to this focusing motor. So if you put it in manual mode and you go nice and slow, it will actually focus slow. But if you pull really fast, it will actually uh, go really fast. And then you try and pull back to the same position and it won't necessarily hit the same position. So when it comes to linear, if you're constantly changing the speed, it's still going to go back to that exact same original position, which most of the G Masters are pretty much linear when it comes to manual focus pulling changing the speed going fast it should be fine when it comes to hitting repeatable focus positions but that's where this focus uh locking mechanism comes in handy so you can pretty much program a point and b point and hit that button and it will actually focus to those positions forward and back if you really want to. And then you can obviously override it or tweak the focus with the focus ring. So, so it is actually really helpful when it comes to manual focus and I really hope they have these in all their other lenses going forward. And I also have to mention that this focal point actually is correct. When you take a measurement to the center of the sensor directly to where that focal point is, it's obviously very correct. Whereas some lenses just doesn't really hit it exactly where it should be. But this one seems to be very accurate and you could actually rely on this when it comes to manual focusing. The only thing I do wish about this thing is that if it was linear focused, it would suit my workflow much better. Now, when it comes to vlogging, this is pretty much what you're going to see out of a 16 millimeter lens. It's crazy wide. This is only just with IBIS on the Sony ZV-E1. So I'll turn active stability on and you can see it does crop in about 10%, but you're still going to get so much of the background in this shot. I'll turn dynamic active stability on now. I'll have to press stop. And this is even with dynamic active stability on. And you can see I'm at the top of my chest here. So it's pretty much like a medium close up I do still uh, have the ability to see so much of the background but this is crazy steady now because it's dynamic active stability so this lens could be a really good option for like I said vloggers youtubers people who want to have this content uh, and be in front of the camera now in terms of depth of field and using this for vlogging essentially this is at arm's length away and this is the kind of depth of field you got at f1.8 and now we're at f2.8. So if you do have the 16 to 35 G master lens, which is an f2.8, this is essentially what the depth of field is going to be like. And if you've got the PZ lens, which is an f4, this is what the f4 is going to look like. So you can obviously tell that an f1.8 is pretty decent when it comes to that depth of field, but you shouldn't notice too much when it comes to vlogging. Uh, but if you, you know, love depth of field and really nice shallow ones, obviously an f1.8, it's going to be better than an f2.8 or an f4. Now, I guess the last bit we can talk about bokeh quality and it's really subjective and bokeh is really interesting at 16 millimeters because a lot of times when you got 16 millimeters, you're not trying to get crazy shallow depths of field because it's a 16 millimeter lens. You're generally shooting lots of wide landscapes, architecture, real estate stuff that's from a distance and you're trying to capture more in the scene. But if you do have something, you know, nice and close in the foreground, you're still going to get some fairly good depth of field because it's an f1.8. And overall, like, it's just a really good build quality. The lens is great, has a weather sealing gasket on the bottom. It's got a USB-C port for obviously firmware updates in the future if it does need any firmware updates. I just think this lens is amazing overall, especially for the price. I mean, 549 US, you can't get anything in this price range for this quality at f1.8. Like I said, you can go for the G Master or the Sigma 14 millimeter f1.8, but you're paying a premium there, you know, three times the price, but they are slightly wider. Otherwise, you've got to go for a zoom lens 
uh, you know, they're 16 to 35 or Tamron 17 to 28, but they are f2.8. But they do have more versatility because it is a zoom lens, so it really depends. Do you want uh, a fast prime or do you want a slightly slower zoom lens? But hopefully this video was useful and obviously making the decision if you need this lens, if it will suit your workflow, and uh, obviously it's worth the money. It just depends if you actually need this. But if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. That'd be amazing. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Let's get it.